Hi guys, this is Takaudi. I welcome you to another video tutorial on ASP.NET Core Web API and Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we were coding our account service class. This is the part two of that video tutorial. And in the last video tutorial, I explained to you guys that these data types directly cannot be accessed by other components and we will get an error. To fix this, we will make use of a library, a JavaScript library called as RxJS. Now, RxJS library helps us to implement asynchronous programming inside our application. And to use these variables or these objects inside other components, we need to make these objects of type observable. Observables are available under RxJS and what observables help us to do, they help us to access the values of objects. So they help us to access single values or stream of values or collections using these observable data types. So once we make these objects observable types, then our component can access them without getting any errors. So to make this variables observable type, first thing we need to do is import the RxJS library inside our class. Now the RxJS, by default when we created the Angular application using Angular CLI, was added by npm inside the package.json file. So if you go to your package.json file in your client app, you will notice that there is a package that's imported the package that is installed or added it's called rxjs and this package rxjs contains the observable data types now in order to use them in our account service class we are going to import it so let's go ahead and add an import statement to import observable so let's do that so let's add it here now the observable data type has been imported observable type has been imported and now we can make use of it in our properties but we still have one more issue that is there's a problem with observable types so we have changed the login status type to observable type and each observable type serves a different purpose there are different types of observable available that we can use in rxjs library and to get more information on observable types, different types of observables, you can go to RxJS official website, which is reactivex.io, and you can go through all these documents here, which provide you information on different types of observable. Since covering all types of observables is not in the scope of this project, I will stick to what is necessary and try to explain it to you. So now, in this application, I was explaining that this observable type has a problem, which is this plain observable type only unicasts its values. So that means that if there are two components, which is login and product, and each want to get the value of login status. So when the user wants to access products, products will fire off a method the method will be first to check if the user is logged in into the application. Similarly, if the user is accessing the login component, the login component will also fire off a method that will request to get the login status of the user so that it knows that the user is already logged in. Now in both cases, when the event fires off, it will go and get the value and the observable type will provide the value to the requester or to the subscriber. So as you see here that it is only unicasting the value, which means when an event fires off and it is requesting the value, it will provide the value to only the requester, not to every component that is subscribed to this observable type. But my requirement is in this application, which is a membership application, once the user goes and accesses the login form enters his information 
then all other components should be notified that the user has logged in. But it's not going to be achieved when I use this observable type. So how do I solve that problem? So there is another observable type, which is subject. And using subject, I can multicast the value of this login status to all the subscribers. If you go back to the reactivex.io web page, and if you go to subject, as you will see, it is also a type of observable which allows values to be multicasted to many observers. So my problem here is somewhat solved because now I'm able to multicast the values of this login status to all the subscribers, that is product and login in this application. Now I face another hurdle, which is that I need to initialize the login status value. I need to set it to false initially, or I need to set it to true initially. But in every application, membership application, we will always set the login status initially to false. But the problem with subject type of observable is I cannot initialize it. I can multicast it, but I cannot initialize the value of this object. So how do I use an observable type that can help me to initialize and also multicast? And the problem is solved by using the behavior subject observable. The behavior subject observable will allow you to initialize the object as well as to multicast it because it's a subject and subject type of observable allows you to multicast the values to all the subscribers. So now what we will do is we will change the data types or types of these three objects to behavior subjects so that we can multicast their values to all the subscribers in this application. So let's go ahead and do that. So now I have added basically change the observable types of these three objects to behavior subject. I have used a new keyword because I'm going to in initialize the values of these three objects. So, and that's the reason why we are using this observable type because it helps us to initialize the values of our object. Now to initialize the value and return them to the subscribers, we have to initialize them here. What we are going to do is we are going to write methods that will return the values and we are going to call these methods within the parentheses. So let's go ahead and write these methods. So I have created a method called it check login status. All I'm going to do is return false. So I'm going to call this method here. So let's call this method here. So check login status. And anytime any subscriber wants the value of login status, they, we are going to return it like this. Now, one more important thing. Now we have initialized the values to false for our login status for username and a user role. We don't want to create any methods because we are going to store these values inside the local storage. If we are storing the values inside the local storage, we want to get the items from our local storage, not from any method. So let's go ahead and get the item. So to get an item from local storage, we have the local storage object available inside our class account service. So let's use that. And now local storage has few methods that we can use. One of them is to get the item. And the item that we need to get, we need to specify the key for that item. So the key will be a string and the key to get the username would be username. Similarly, you're going to get the user role from our local storage. So let's set the key to user role. Now we have not yet set the values of these two objects inside local storage. So we will do that when we code the login method. And the next thing that we are going to do is code our login method. So 
create the login method and since we are going to call our login web api which is an http post method it requires two values that is the username and password we will supply those two values in the parameters of our login method and inside the login method we are going to return the result of our http post request to our api forward slash count forward slash login method now the return result to access it first we need to make a call to the method and we are going to use the http object so using the http object we will call the post method because our web api is an http post method and then we need to specify what type of result we will receive so or we are sending so it's going to be in any type we'll leave the type as any and then here we want to call the pipe method where we will handle the response inside this now here when we call the post method we need to specify some values first the url that we are going to call when we are doing this http post request as we all know we have created a variable for that which is the base url login so let's supply that then comma we need to add the parameters or the options or the values that we need to send to or to our web api that's the data so to do that we will use curly braces inside the curly braces we will supply the data so username comma password which is provided inside the parameters of our login method now here inside the pipe method where we are going to handle the response of our method request we are going to code further this login method for now i am just going to leave this as it is and in the next video tutorial i will continue coding this entire login method thank you for watching please like and subscribe my channel tech Audi.